Hello everyone. My name is Mr. Walls and I am a teacher at William Patterson High School. I teach grade 10 and the topic we explored today was contemporary United States global connectivity. This lesson occurred on June 6, 2016 and the essential question posed was what role does modern technology and media play on politics? The objectives I had on the board where that students will be able to examine the ways in which media and technology affect political issues. They will evaluate the political and social impact of new and emerging technologies on individuals and nations. And lastly, students will assess the processes in which officials are elected and also assess public concern. To introduce the class today, students were given a do now in which they viewed political cartoons and answered understanding questions about it, which coincides with Bloom's taxonomy in the sense that the questions scaled in levels of understanding. There were six questions total. The first one corresponded to the knowledge category of Bloom's taxonomy. It asked, what is featured in this political cartoon? The second one corresponded with the comprehension aspect of Bloom's taxonomy. It asked, do you recognize any of the symbols in this picture? The third was an application skill in which the students were asked, how does this cartoon relate to current events? The fourth was an analysis question. Why does the artist depict national debt as a wall? The fifth was an evaluation question. What messages is this political cartoon conveying? The last was a synthesis question. It asked, what is the effect of this picture on you, the student? After 10 minutes had passed, we transitioned from the do now into the main part of the class session. This was dedicated to a current event article in which students demonstrated understanding of the article by emulating at least one reading strategy they learned earlier this year to be reviewed. After each student was done with the article, they engaged in a turn and talk and then discussed any questions, opinions, or interpretations they may have had about the article. Some interesting thoughts came up during the turn and talk. For instance, one student, Dorothy, asked, do superdelegates undermine true democracy? This meant that superdelegates, to an extent, took away some of the power of the normal delegates. Phoebe raised the issue of media convolution and the importance of voting. This article seemed to insist upon itself that there was pointless to go out on Tuesday and vote because Hillary had basically clinched the election. And lastly, Janet thought this article was biased and presumptuous for the very same reason. At the end of the class session, students were then asked to submit their marked up articles to assess their reading strategies. This was based upon the depth and the relevance of their questions, annotations, text coding, sketches, or notes that they had written on the article. I have bought with me five samples of student articles, each using a different reading strategy. The first one comes from one of my students, Arnold. On the back of his article, he had utilized the two-column strategy to note the odds in favor of each of the political opponents. You can see right here. The second reading strategy used came from another student, Carlos, who utilized the sketching through the text method in order to keep his focus. For instance, you can see on page one here, he has doodled some of the smaller delegates in retrospect to the superdelegates. At the bottom, you see the preemptive celebration for Hillary's victory, supposedly clinched. On page two here, we have someone very literally crossing a threshold. On the bottom, we see New Jersey as a determinant state for Tuesday. And on the very bottom, we see a hat that says, Make America Great Again for Donald Trump. On the third page, he has doodled a small flame in the middle, which says burn, corresponding to uh, opponent Bernie Sanders. And on the bottom here, we see the widening gap between Sanders and Hillary, as shown by his enlarged bar graph. And on the very last page, we see he has drawn a vote going into a ballot box to evince the importance of voting. The third reading strategy used was text coding, which was employed by another student, Wanda. As you can see on her marked up article, she had put a check, for instance, on the first page, which demonstrated a fact she had already known. On the second page, we see an X on the top margin, as was something she was not aware of. Right below it, there is a question mark in the second paragraph. She was confused as to how Hillary could already secure 2,383 of the votes, but still only be very, very close on Tuesday when the polls came in. Below that, on the third to last paragraph, we have a drawing of an eye here. She was able to 
very literally visualize the 58.8% of pledge delegates in a numeric representation. Essentially, she filled up a room with 2,300 people. On the third page, she had another question, which went with the second paragraph there. She was unaware that Puerto Rico was able to participate in the delegate voting. Uh, we see towards the end here, she had drawn some Z's denoting she was bored, I guess, by the lengthy part of these paragraphs. And at the end, she wrote a little star for this important tidbit that voter participation was very important as that 80% for Bernie could either make or break it on Tuesday. A fourth strategy used by student Keisha Franklin is the text annotation method, which is another good one for keeping focus, but also writing down any questions you may have. For instance, if we look at her first page here, you see she had wrote the question as to who determines the number of the superdelegates. I mean, you can kind of see her thoughts as we go along here, you know. Even little things like her noticing that uh, NJ was one of the last votes for Tuesday. Same thing as we go on to page two. We see more statements and questions and other questions and just some statistical information for her own benefit. Same thing on page three, just more questions and just some analytical statements. And just her final reaction on the last page, which she was shocked that 80% would be a lot to secure for Bernie. A final reading strategy that's simple, albeit effective, is the read with a question in mind strategy. This was used by student Ralphie Tonelli, who had the question, is there political bias in this article? This seemed to be a recurring theme in our turn and talk in which many of the students believe that this article or the author insisted that this um, delegate campaign was essentially over and that Hillary had clinched it, as the article had put it anyhow. These were just a few sample articles to demonstrate that students had each employed a different method of reading strategy, however they all proved to be effective. I look forward to wrapping up Contemporary America with my students as the semester draws to a close.